Welcome to Morning Prayers with First Presbyterian Church of Concord. Today is Monday, July 7th, and we're really grateful that you joined us. Below the video, down there someplace, is a bulletin in digital format for you to follow along with the service. And if you've been with us before, welcome back. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can get all of the information that we're putting out there. There's a button down there for that too. And don't forget to share this and other videos from our channel with your friends and family. You never know who might need God's encouragement today. So share this and share God's love. The opening sentences this morning are, Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. You created the day and the night, O God. You set the sun and the moon in their places. You set the limits of the earth. You, God, made the summer and the winter. Today's morning psalm is Psalm 107, 19 through 20. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, and he delivered them from their distress. Today's scripture is Acts 3, 11 through 16. It takes place right after Peter and John perform a miraculous healing. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's portico. They were utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate. Though he had decided to release him, you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you instead. And you killed the author of life, whom God then raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong again, whom you see and you know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see now. Let's let that sink in. And the faith that is through Jesus has given this guy perfect health in the presence of faith. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. Oh, you of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Again, in Matthew, Jesus says this. He was amazed when he heard the centurion. Truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Faith. If I asked each of you watching to define it, I might get a dozen similar yet variant answers. So let's level set on the three basic components of faith. Knowledge. You can't have faith in something or someone you don't know. This is where doctrine, church tradition, your personal involvement with scripture and your relationship with Jesus and God come into play. Secondly, assent. Knowledge means little unless you're convinced that that knowledge is true. 
you might know that a movie setting is in Detroit, for example, but after having visited Universal Studios, you may not believe that the film was actually done in Detroit. Finally, trust. And this is the one that I find that I and so many other people have the most difficulty sustaining. With a lifetime of blessings, provision, and even after undeniable direct intervention on my behalf, in answer to prayer, there are times when I lean on my own understanding, times when I wrest control from God. Have you experienced similar times? A popular saying is, trust is earned, not given. But the truth really is, trust can't be earned. It only can be given. When we're deciding how much to trust, we usually evaluate whether or not our trust has been earned. And until it is, we hold back total trust to protect ourselves, right? We try to maintain some control and we create limits and boundaries to trust. And it's these limits and barriers that we create that prevent our letting God have total control. When you look at the resume of promises made and promises kept by God in scripture, coupled with our own experiences of God's grace and love in our lives, you would think that God has earned our trust. Yet we continue to not trust completely. This is why giving God our trust is the only way to make it happen. We have to give it to him. And once that knowledge is set and trust are together, we then have the faith that's necessary for miracles. Whether those miracles be healing someone, our daily bread, or restoration of a broken relationship, it's our faith that often will prompt God to move. So as we approach God in prayer this morning, let's do it full of faith with confidence that God does move in modern day miracles. Amen. Satisfy us this morning, Lord, with your love. And we will live this day in joy and in praise. We praise you, Lord, our creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. Especially we thank you for the miracle of life and the wonder of living. Particular blessings this morning, Lord, uh, for the resources of the earth. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for the creative vision and skillful craft of people and the treasure that is stored up in every human life. Lord, we dare to pray for others, God. We claim your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world, committing ourselves to care for those around us in your name. Especially we pray for those who work for the benefit of others, those who can't work today for whatever reason. We pray for those who teach and those who learn, Lord. And we pray for people that are poor and people that are rich. And we pray for your church in Europe, Lord. And we pray for those that are rich to share their blessings with others. Lord, we pray for Pastor Johanna as she undergoes chemotherapy. We pray for Laverne Heron's daughter, Sharon, who's awaiting surgery. We pray for Kathy Sunquist's care caretaker who's healing from surgery. We pray for Julie Sedal, Lord, in the ICU. Peace be on her with the passing of her brother, Paul. And uh, we, we pray for her brother, Mike's broken hip. And we pray for Emmett Parr, Lord, and Beth Burns' sister, Ellen, and endurance for Jerry, whose husband is in hospice. Lord, we pray for Kathy Brock's caregiver who's recovering for surgery. We pray for Bonnie Brown Seymour, who is ill with cancer, Lord. We pray for Noelle's son, Devon, who's recovering from a car accident. We pray for your peace, Lord, to just go over Ellen Hague in hospice. Lord, we continue to pray for the Towers and the Carlton. We pray for Mike Maritzi, who's uh, dealing with cancer, Lord, and, and 
Lord, we know that you cause the sun to rise. And you bring Christ into our lives to dispel all darkness. Give us grace, Lord, to reflect Christ's glory today and let his love show in our deeds, his peace shine in our words, and his healing in our touch, that all may give him praise now and forever. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, Lord, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we go out into the world today, may the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us again today. Remember to bless the Lord's name and let his name be praised. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking the messy heart icon over here and Please share this and other videos with your friends and family. Be blessed, stay safe, and keep well. Amen.